Hey everybody, um, it's Deborah Goley here, and I thought that I would um, keep on going on some animal studies, but in lieu of um, graphite, this time we'll use some pastels, some soft pastels. They feel like chalk, like the school chalk you had. Uh, you might have a big set, you know, of um, pastels. Uh, maybe you have some from uh, your Crayola set. But they definitely are not oil, they're chalky, they feel soft, and they just glide onto the paper. You'll need to use fixative when you're done uh, to make sure, just, you know, to um, protect your drawing. Um, I wanted to work on this lion here, and I printed out a free photo um, image of a lion, because I'm not going to get up close to one. And um, I thought that I would just kind of walk you through the shape drawing of the lion and then how to use pastels. So if we want to have this right in front of us, and you can see kind of how I'm going to draw this guy. He's got a big mane but a big, and a big face. So what I like to do is make myself an X or a cross across the paper. I'm going to locate the eyes in next, and so I'm going to put uh, eye number one along this line, and eye number two along this line. Looks to me like they're about like this. And there's this triangle that happens with the line. I don't know if you noticed that, but there's like this equilateral triangle. So the nose down here. So if I were to draw a triangle, I would see that shape going on. I actually see the opposite triangle too. So from here, I have another one going in the opposite direction for the pouches. So let's do that. We know there's an oval here for the chin. And then we have this round mane uh, for the outline of the face before we hit the mane. So I am just going to make that big round circle. All of this is going to get hidden in my pastels. I'm using a school pencil, uh, a number two hard pencil. Uh, you can use whatever you have. And now I'm going to take my uh, pencil and just kind of outline some things. Um, I know that there's a nose bone here. It kind of rounds around like that. He's got his actual nose here. Some of you might have already seen my tiger drawing. You can look at that on YouTube. Um, and I did that in graphite. I like drawing animals. I like drawing pet portraits in acrylic. I do them in fiber. Just about anything. I change them up a bit though when I'm doing commissions. Uh, they're not so real. I don't love doing realism, but I can. I have. I also paint murals on walls, so um, I can just about do any style. <laughs> Abstract if you want. We could make this look like it's not even a lion anymore. His ears are barely even seen, but they're out here somewhere in relationship to the eye. Like if you were to draw, kept drawing a line from that triangle. They're out here somewhere. So see, there's so much symmetry going on here. And then that outer um, realm of the entire mane goes way out here. All right, so we're ready to go. All right, so you definitely want to have uh, some colors of, you definitely want to have white for sure. Um, I like using a dark colored background when I'm doing pastels instead of white paper. But if all you have is white, that will work just fine. And um, I think that the depth of the color of the background paper just adds to uh, my composition. And uh, it actually changes the color a bit, just a bit, when you work on colored paper. Okay, so let's just kind of tuck this guy back here while I'm working on the face. I want to look at the underlying color on his face and it's kind of this little peachy color so I'm gonna find a peach color I've got one right here it's kind of flesh toned I'm actually gonna break it because I can't get that big piece to fit all over here but I can work more easily with a small piece 
And I'm just gonna rub it for a broad area all over the lion's face like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a napkin, da -da -da, a napkin or a Kleenex, and I'm going to smudge that. This paper um, is a pastel, it's labeled as pastel paper. It has a tooth to it, so it feels kind of rough already and allows a lot of the chalk to just sit into the grooves while you're working it. Okay, so I've got an underlying underlying lion face going on there, some flesh. If I were to take all his hair off, what his color flesh would be. Okay, so now I'm going to work on his gold uh, highlights, maybe his, um, his shadowing with some browns and purples. And so I'm going to look for, I have a couple of sets here. There's one that's really soft. Um, these will break down, like you just pick them up and they break down. So there's different varieties of pastels out there. And you're going to get to the point where you'll find out which ones do which. Um, this one. And some sets have uh, more colors, so you don't have to try to mix so many. So this is kind of a, a golden yellow brown. And I think I'll just put that right there on his lovely little cheeks maybe a little bit on his forehead so I'm working on tonal value what is value it's how dark and light something is I'm not working on texture that's the same when working with graphite I got to get this on first before I do hair um, let's take a little bit of purple and brown and let's see what we can do with that I love, let's see, you always can have a little test strip to buy you if you need to see what color it looks like, especially on colored paper, because you may not like it so much. I've got a brown, a purple, I don't know what color this is, like a dark brown. I think I'm going to use this tiny little piece here. That'll be good. Okay, so... I also like to have a little bit of Q-tips nearby. Um, I'm going to save the black for last. Why? Because it's a mess. Black just covers everything and that does not make me happy. You can even use a makeup sponge too if you have, but I also like working with my Q-tips. You can use your blender stick, but don't mix your blender stick that you use for pastels in your drawing box with your graphite. You'll be forever mad because you've got color on your blender stick that you can't get off. I mean, you could sand it away, but he wants to do all that work. There's even some gray in here, too. those pockets in there. He's got those pretty green eyes. Why don't we just go ahead and uh, lock in those pretty green eyes so that we can see them. And I know where they are. Doesn't look like much yet. Don't worry. It happens. It's going to get there. If you're not real um, comfortable with using color yet, it's okay. It's really nice with pastels because you can actually cover over stuff if you didn't really love it that much. Okay, I'm going to find kind of a golden brown too to keep on working. For those of you who want to try this. All right, I'm just gonna see if I could take that brown and He 
It's kind of coming together. Got to get another Q-tip out here. It might be time to get some gray out. All about smudging with the chalk. They make what they call new pastels, so towards the end I usually get my new NU, not N-E-W, N-U, uh, out that are a little bit harder and they're not you're not able to smudge them. Just like using an H pencil, you're not able to smudge that very well. Okay, it looks like I've got this face stuck in a, a white ball right now. There's this little chin. I've done this probably half a dozen times already and I've never seen him come out the same every time I do him. It's always a little bit different. Is more defined. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to continue to work around the mane. I'm going to turn this on its side and put the whole big golden mane on. Let's move all this out of the way. One law. Cover right over those ears. Big male lion here going all the way around. It actually takes a lot less time doing work in pastel, I feel. So I like to work with this if I'm doing uh, just some sketches or some design ideas before I do my fiber work because I can work pretty quickly with the pastels just studying my color. Now, though I'm going to smudge it in the way that it grows. See how I'm smudging in a radial fashion? I'm not going like this. I'm going around the wheel here. I just pull out some of that beautiful mane. He's going to be a father lion, I think. <laughs> okay, so that's the undertone, right? So now I want to come back in and put some deeper tones. Actually, that one's a little bit lighter. It looks so dirty, I couldn't tell what it, what it was. But we could use... Some deeper tones. Where were those ears? I think they're right in here somewhere. Don't want to lose them. Okay. Give him a little bit of a pink here.
Okay, so I've kind of really got all the underlying colors on there. Now I want to start to add that fur. And so this at this point you're going to use, instead of the side of the stick, you're going to want to use the short end of the stick. Huh, the only time you want the short end of the stick, right? So gonna put in hair and I'm going in that direction the way it would grow pulling out and I usually use three or four different colors for hair And the ones that are in his face are pretty short. Just a little bit of yellow. Brighten him up a little bit. Oh, he needs a little bit of blue. You know, you're the artist. You don't have to use the colors that are in the picture. In fact, you really should make it your own if you don't have rights to using the photograph from the photographer or the artist if you ever end up wanting to sell your work or showcase it somewhere you really want to give the recognition to the original artist I'm just going to smudge it just a hair this time I'm not Real heavy pressured. Okay, I'm starting to add. I'm gonna use some or bright orange. More terracotta, maybe. If you would like to commission me to do some work, I'm happy to do that. I do commissioned work all the time. In fact, that's really how I survive. Through commissioned work, whether it's painting murals on walls or on canvas, or doing a drawing of you or your loved one or a trip you did to the beach. Okay, so let's take a little bit of black on its point. Let's work on, I know everybody's been waiting just so much to get that little bit of black speck in the eye. Must be a bright day because he just has that big black speck. And I'm going to draw just a little line here. Really get the socket like he's got eyeliner on and he means business. He definitely has some character. And I definitely want to give it a little bit more of that because this stuff part is really black, huh? And hopefully I can find a gray.
go back and use my bright white oh I think I need to pump up his little pink nose a little bit more get this really bright white now that top layer all his character marks. I'm just going to take the point and strike it. Give him some whiskers. Some hair coming off of his chinny chin chin. It's all in the arm. I don't have my hand laying down on the paper. shadow, a little bit of purple. I'm a big fan of purple. Especially on this orange guy. And I think I'm just going to take some blue and rub it back here. Because blue and orange are opposite each other. I think that get rid of some of that green. The green's the only color I had right now, so just using green paper instead of blue. But look, I can change the color of the background. really all about mixing.
White is somewhere. Oh, I could just use gray. And we're almost completed here. We've just about got there. Put a little bit more brown up in his forehead. New growth. Looks a little too perfect. Too quaffed. So dirty him up. I know, I work pretty quickly, but. Again, I usually use this as my sketching. So that I can study something. did this project with my nephew a couple of summers ago. It was really fun. He writes music and anyway, he did a good job. And he doesn't draw on a regular basis, so anybody can do this. And I was drawing sideways, so I think my nose is just a little off. I'm drawing sideways so that the camera can be right over you, over this artwork. So maybe his nose is just a little... Um, I'm going to take my black again and just make sure I've feathered those out. See, these are a little bit more cold pressed. They're not going to uh, smudge as much to put my finishing touches on. And I think I'll sign it in red, which is what I normally do. <laughs> All right. Oh, that red's not really showing up. Voila! There is Mr. Lion. And here is the original one. See, no two are the same. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little lesson on how to use uh, soft pastels. And tune back in, Deborah Goley. Art.com is my website, and you can see what I'm up to. And you can also um, maybe sign up for some more classes if you enjoyed your time doing this one. 
Um, have a great day. Keep creating because you are uniquely created. See ya.